G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Faye Answered Questions, where the Faye family gathers around the microphone to answer questions about life. This one's a very special episode because I think it'll be the last episode of the season and after that we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back at it. And we're all here today. Yes, and we're all in the same room and we have the exact same shirt on. Woohoo! It's a Faye thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mom, what's the question this week? So this week we're doing two questions that were sent in from listeners. The first one is directed at, well, I guess they're both directed at Dad and I, but you guys are obviously can put your input in. The first one is, what are some things you experienced in your childhood you wish your kids were able to experience? And the second question is advice on child rearing and what's Good, bad, and ugly about it. All right. Well, since these questions are directed at you two, do you have any first thoughts right away? Um, I do. I've been thinking about this one and thinking kind of back on my childhood. I grew up on a farm from the time I was five. And <laughs> I think one of the things I wish our kids would have been able to experience would have been learning to drive earlier. I started driving at pretty much the age of five, six in the pasture with the hay truck. I learned how slowly, how how equipment and how the car or the truck responded when you turn the wheel and stuff. So when I turned 16, on my 16th birthday, I went and got my driver's license that day and went out with girlfriends that night um, because I had the experience and was able to do uh, all of that without my parents worrying. And for our kids, they didn't have that experience. And I also knew how to drive a standard and they really haven't had that opportunity. <laughs> In theory, I know how to drive a standard. I've done it a little bit. I'm not good at it, but I... I used to speed shift golf carts when I went to the golf course, so I know how to drive a standard. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> if you can drive a standard, you can drive anything. The The difference is most cars in the States are automatic, whereas in Europe, they're standard because they enjoy driving. That Where, would be five-speed in the real world, people. Manual, manual transmission. Anyway, that's just one of those things. And the other thing is my best friend lived a half a mile up the road. So at five and six years old, we would walk to each other's house and we would be gone for hours at a time. This was well before cell phones. The only rule was we had to check in with one of the moms at some point every few hours. The one time we didn't do that when we were teenagers, we ended up being grounded and it was supposed to be two weeks, but we annoyed our mother so much that it lasted like two days. <laughs> but we would literally roam all over and we would just be out doing stuff. Probably shouldn't have been doing some of the stuff we did. Throwing sticks at each other in the paddock. <laughs> no, well, like we had canoes. Um, we'd go down to the river. I, I look at, back at it now and I'm thinking there was no way I would let my kids do that. But on the other hand, we learned so much by not having supervision and knowing what would happen if we got caught. Dad, do you have any, any thoughts on this? You also grew up kind of out in the, in the country. Yeah, we moved to the farm when I was 12. So I grew up, I guess, from 12, well... I say grew up on a farm from 12, but I went to boarding school, so, you know, I didn't really spend a whole bunch of time there. Uh, so what do I think you guys could learn? I think boarding school would have been a good uh, experience for you guys. Yeah, I know you guys don't think so, but it was awesome. I learned a whole bunch of stuff out on the farm. Uh, learned how to shoot, learned how to use explosives, learned how to... Uh, ride a motorcycle, you know, um, fish. I hate fishing. It's so boring. No, it's not that bad. No, it, what, the what the hell? What are you talking about? I got back into the fishing. Uh, you know, um, how to hunt, different things. Um, and, of course, in Australia, you're talking rabbits and kangaroos and that kind of stuff, not deer. deer. 
that you bait in and shoot that, while yeah, they eat. Yeah, we actually hunted. You know, uh, what else did... Uh, one of the things we did at the school I went to at the boarding school is at the end of the ninth grade, we took a big road trip on a couple of motor coaches full of kids and went down through Victoria and toured Australia. And then in the end of the 11th grade, we went up through Queensland and right up through the outback and then back across to the coast and down. And that one was like a 14 or 15 day trip. Oh, that'd be nice. And we went out to the Whitsunday Islands and the Great Barrier Reef and, you know, uh, did all that. So uh, I think that would have been good. And then growing up, my parents, when I was younger, took me, uh, we had a bumper hitch caravan, excuse me, RV, and we toured out through Broken Hill in western New South Wales and down through the Barossa Valley, which is the wine district of Australia. And then another year we went up to uh, Carnarvon National Park in Queensland, and then we'd go over to the coast all the time and go for so travel was always put in was big for us to travel around and so probably more travel although you guys like <laughs> you travel you guys traveled <laughs> yeah. three in the back of a sub eh? yeah the, the corn palace was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> counting the antelopes the pronghorn, the pronghorn yeah it's terrible also uh, was it the Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guys in the rock. You know that place out there? <laughs> Super boring. Don't ever go there. The only exciting part was when the mountain goats came down to the outdoor seating area and they're like, oh, everybody has to go inside so you don't get messed up by a mountain goat. <laughs> but uh, there was nothing else around there. See, but we didn't do the cool thing. Like we didn't take the hike up to the top of the heads. Oh, that's true. No. We didn't have time. We yeah. had time. We didn't know where we wanted. Oh yeah. We we. Wow, we took our kids to a national monument. We're getting bagged to fuck out for it. We took them to live in other country. I didn't. I like Mount Rushmore. I didn't. I didn't mind it. You shoved three energetic children in the back of the car and told them to shut up for twelve hours. Yeah. That was a short day. Shut up or I'll put classical music on again. <laughs> Mom, no! Road trips with the face. Yeah. Never a good thing. I, I think what I miss for you guys that we had that you guys did not have was the freedom and the safety factor. Yeah. We had, I mean, like the road that I grew up on hardly had any traffic. When we go out to the farm now, it's demolition derby some days. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's a cut through road now that everybody uses and knows about. So, you know, back in the day, there was an occasional chicken feed truck, if that, you know, and, and you know, the neighbors and they, they all knew that the kids would roam up and down the street to see each other up and down the road. And I, I think you guys missed a bit of that. You got a bit of it when we lived in Idaho. You had a little bit of freedom. We gave you a little bit more as you grew up. I used to go around ride my bike all around town all summer. Right. Far too. And, you know, I wanted you to have that experience and stuff and because we had it and we enjoyed it and I knew how important that was. But I think, you know, times have changed. and But, you know, you do the best you can with where you're at at the time. I think that... Perhaps we spent a lot of time trying to grow you guys up too quickly. Like, I think if I look back on it, you could have been kids a little longer. But because of the nature of my work and what I was doing and where we were and the welcome and non-welcome that we received, uh, we you guys had to grow up way too quick and so you didn't get to be a kid you couldn't make a mistake and and live with it without the community at large wanting to point a finger and and hold everyone to the friggin burning cross and torch the crap out of us and the rest of that so i think probably you know what could what would I have wanted you to experience more was probably 
just being a kid, yeah. like just having fun. I think, again, some of the best times we had were in Idaho. Absolutely. Um, you know, from riding your bikes, as you said, afar off during the summer and going out hella, yeah. hella miles on your bike and us not worrying about it. And then building uh, luge courses in the front yard in the winter, and uh, walking uphill to school both ways in the snow. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think some of those, yeah. I think those were probably some of the better times as kids. Plus, you know, we'd get on our bikes in the summer and take to the trails around Lake Coeur d'Alene and ride for miles. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was good. Remember the time you had to bail out, you almost not bowled over a kid? <laughs> the kid was on the wrong that side of the trail. so funny. Almost jumped over it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I shouldn't have been there. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't have been in the wrong. I <laughs> think <that> kid. <laughs> part of it, too, was you guys were you guys are so close in age that, you know, we had one every 22 months, and yeah. then... And you know, Ben would be going through a stage, and then Felicity would, just as Ben's getting out of whatever stage, Felicity was heading that stage. Yeah. And then it was going to be Josh. And so each time it was like six months, and I was like, I, I remember one day thinking, I can't do this repeatedly. And you guys were all there, and I looked at you, and I said, that's it. Get it together. When one of you hits a rebellious stage, you all three better hit it at the same time, because I can't deal with it more than six months. Or whatever. So you kind of, poor Josh, he kind of had to grow up quickly, but. <laughs> In case you didn't hear that, it was my boots going up your clacker. And all the series so is when we left and people were collapsing left, right, and center. And for those that don't know, clacker is a bum. A bum, an ass, a butt. Assumed. We didn't know. <laughs> it was just really funny at the time. I knew it. <laughs> I think I do think though that you guys experience a lot more than regular American kids experience like we traveled a lot and each and every one of you got to go overseas on your own on your own those. pretty much you know um, you each had that experience uh, so I think there was things we did that perhaps others wouldn't get to the experience i know that you we've touched on this before in another podcast you're you, you might not have understood why we did the things we did with your education such as you must take music you know and uh, you know pain and suffering, pain and suffering. <laughs> but we gave you a more rounded more european education old european not current socialist stupid european but uh <laughs> no <laughs> but um I think in hindsight, you guys will look back and go, well, yeah, okay, I can see that and can see why they did that. Which I think leads into our next question. Yes. So what advice do you have for the three of us as far as raising kids goes? Um, I have a lot. Okay, we'll pick one and go. I guess I'll be quiet. (laughs) First one is, I'm too young to be a grandma, so let's not even go there. Um, (laughs) I think people need to understand, first and foremost, when you decide to have children, you are committing to being a parent for the rest of your life, not having a best friend, not having somebody to go and hang out with. You are responsible for raising this little person into a productive, contributing member of society not some snowflake. You are a parent first and foremost. You are the one that has the experience up to that point. You're the one that is responsible for this life. You have to make those decisions that are best for that child and for your family. And it you can't pass it off onto somebody else. And it's very disheartening to see so many parents and their daughters are like moms and daughters. Oh, my mom's my best friend. No, that's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. Now you, your parenting role should change as your child grows with each stage, which is something, um, was very important to me. And I really strived hard to do it. And I hope I have 
because my parents did not do that. My family still sees me as at the most on a good day as a 12 year old. And it's very disheartening to try to have an adult conversation with my family and they don't, they just dismiss everything I say, which is not helpful or healthy. Um, first things first, you know, mum just said, when you decide to have children, which was not something we did. <laughs> Whoopsie, yeah. times three. Accidents so uh, I think for me, marriage, kids, they're heavy decisions. And personally, probably not something you need to get into in your 20s. You know, uh, we... Uh, Mum and I got married. I was 23. She was 21. We had a kid seven days before we got married. That's you. <laughs> yeah. It is I. Ben. Did I say Bane? I meant Bane. No, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, blue arms down. Anyway, um, you know, seven days before we got married, we had Ben. Not something I'd recommend for people. And we grew up with you three. Like, we were young and dumb and struggling to make it, and you guys came along with us for the journey. Uh, uh, everything we were doing growing up as young 20-year-olds and newly marrieds and having a family and, you know, trying to survive and, and provide, and we just you, you guys came along on that journey. Sometimes it was great, sometimes it sucked. You know, you got the... You got the good emotions, you got the bad emotions, you got the eruptions, you know, or, or you got all of it. I don't think I'd necessarily recommend it. I think you need to, my advice as a somewhat middle 40s. <laughs> um, I was 35 and no older than that. That's exactly. right. No, no older than 35. Uh, you know, looking back, I, I, I would think, wait you know if you don't want to wait that's fine if you make that decision and you're you're comfortable making that decision that's great uh but wait wait to get married you've got plenty of time in you you don't have to get married in your early 20s for some reason in this country that seems to be a fucking thing and people push it uh, and particularly in the south i don't know what is up with the south pushing early marriages but um some holdover from the fifties. Yeah, holdover from the yeah eighteen fifties. Like fuck, grow up. The South will never rise again. God, so God. don't worry about it. You're you're a country now, not Stay two down. individual places. Um, so you know, take some time. Really think about it. Move on. You don't have to conform to peer pressure. Kids. Phew, it's a lifetime yeah, commitment. Yeah, it's a not lifetime commitment. Years. It's it's a lifetime commitment. Wait, wait, wait till you're in your thirties. You got plenty of time, you know, and then go from there. I would not recommend necessarily having kids later than your thirties. I wouldn't be into your forties having kids because no one wants their grandfather slash parent at a graduation. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you've got plenty of time. I think we push people to make decisions way too early. I think so. I, I think if you do have children and you have to parent them at the stage they're in. Yeah. Um, as you guys were growing up and maturing and we would change how we parented each one of you. Mm. Each one of you was parented a little bit differently because of your personality, how you responded to things, what was your motivation, what was not your motivation. Um, and you have to look at each child as an individual and go from there big pet peeve of mine is people who who talk baby talk to their kids why are you teaching them something twice don't talk baby talk i don't think we ever talked baby talk to you guys it was more of you're you're a little person and we just spoke to you and i to the to this day cannot remember what word it was but we were living out on the farm and I was driving you guys to school and one of you said, mom, what does this word mean? 
And I was like, what? Because we did not use that word in our house. It was the childish word for something else. And I said, well, that's, and it took me a minute. And I said, well, that's the kid word for what you guys know is this. And Felicity's response was, well, why don't they just use that word? That's stupid to use a baby word. I'm like, well, that's how some parents do. That's how they raise their kids. And, and it's, you know, I'm like, you're, you're a person. You're not, if you're going to spend the time teaching them two different words for one thing, why don't you spend the time teaching them a foreign language as well as English? Because that's one thing I wish we would have done more with you guys. Hello, Paula. Hello, Mama. <laughs> yes, child. <laughs> May I hoover the living room? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> May I hoover the living room? I And I think the other thing as a parent you have to know your kids' strengths and weaknesses. Right. You have to, when they're in school, you have to fight for them. We learned the hard way. With Ben, we should have pushed a little harder. Um, he was very bored in about the fourth grade, and we should have really pushed to have him tested, put in different classes so that he could excel better. Instead, he became the lovable class clown. <laughs> We learned that lesson the hard way, and when it came to the other two, and especially when it came to Joshua, we saw the signs early on, and we monitored it, and we spent six months fighting with the school district we were in at the time to have him tested, to have him moved up a grade. I still didn't get the point of that test. That was the dumbest test I've ever taken in my life. That's a government thing. They had to they had to prove that they did. And even after we had done all that, we were met with, well, we'll just give him projects. And I said, and your father said, he doesn't want a project. He wants to learn. Can your teachers not teach? He wants to be taught. Still weren't listening. And this was the time when No Child Left Behind was a big thing. And we flipped it on its head and threw it back in their face and said, you're leaving this child behind. And it came down to they didn't want to do that because it would move the money around that they were getting from the state. And we just simply called their bluff and said, that's fine. We don't have to live in this town or this district. We can actually live in a different state and still work where we need to work. We can pull all three and you'll have nothing. And by the way, you work for us because our taxes are paying your salary. So... With that, and a gentle persuasion from your father, we were able to... Don't fuck with Faja. <laughs> don't fuck with Faja. We were able to get Joshua into the, into the class he needed to be in. So he went from third grade to fifth grade. And they, they were like, well, what about socially? And I said, that's our problem. And at that point, all of Ben's... He hung out with Ben's friends. And nobody really cared that he was four years younger than... Then then they didn't know the difference. And it was probably the best move we ever made for, for Josh. It yeah. stimulated him mentally. It was the best move for him. And we kept an eye on it all the way through school to make sure. On the reverse side, the same thing with Felicity. Are you doing okay? What do you need? What classes do you want to take? We were a bit involved. Every time we went to a new school, they knew us fairly quickly. Because we were in there going, this is what I need for my children. Well, let's flip that on its head because at the minute it's becoming a lecture rather than a podcast. So. Sorry, I told you how to do it. You know, aha. Let's uh, flip it on its head. What about you guys? You know, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What would you like to have learned? What didn't you learn? You know, this haven't heard a lot from you yet. I, I don't have anything. I don't plan on having kids. This is not really a conversation I plan on ever needing to have. <laughs> No tiny humans will be coming from this human. <laughs> All right. Ben, what about you? What do you wish we would have been taught? What do you wish we could have done? I don't know. I guess for me, well, I wish I guess I would have had more freedom growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can see why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was of, keeping you out of jail. I was kind of a shed. Um, no, what? And I guess if if yeah, I had, had if I had more freedom, especially in high school, I probably would have got into some shenanigans that I didn't 
necessarily need to be in, I guess. But I don't know, because it hit me when I got to college. And at that point, it was, it was I got to college and it was like uh, kicking the baby bird out of the nest. They were like, have fun. And I was like, wait, what? There's no rules now? And they were like, nah, just don't do anything dumb. And I was like, oh, okay. That didn't work. <laughs> um, and so like for at least the first year, I was kind of like chill and just like tiptoed around and figured it out. But I came home that summer and like found out that like squash is just gallivanting around like no curfew that like whatever and i was just like you know um, you know what i did i hung out with Derek, and that was it (laughs) but yeah i was still like so i I heard that and i was like so this dude can just go and do whatever but i i was in high school would get to go some places sometimes and it was like you're home by 11 and i was like that's when the party's just getting started. What is this? Like, uh, my, precisely. Like, my what? friends weren't like bad. I didn't have like bad friends, and nobody was like like. I don't know. We were like, nah. Most of them were all band nerds, but I mean, we also like I don't know. My grade in high school and like all the band kids were friends with like the jocks and stuff. So like it wasn't really too much of like a clicky thing. But so they did like go to other parties of like the other people throughout. And I think I guess that's why I didn't. <laughs> get to hang out uh, <laughs> late into the evening so I would get invited to the parties all the time I'm like I right, bro you know my parents I can't fucking do anything so what happened when you came home mm, 10 happened. minutes late <laughs> you lost driving privileges for a month oh uh, yeah I mean I got asked to sneak out once but I went no thank you I choose life <laughs> <laughs> so I guess for the most part I guess in high school, I just kind of wish I had more freedom, but on the other side of that coin, I know why I didn't, because I know me, and I'm a mischievous little fucker. And we knew you too, so, hence the no freedom. So yeah. I, I get I get why it didn't happen, but at the same time, I still wish that there was a little bit more. But I guess I got the freedom I kind of wanted for a while while I was in college, because your grades will reflect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I, like, I was never too rowdy of a kid. Because I always saw what happened when Ben was rowdy. And the hammer came down. I was like, well, I can't do shit. So, <laughs> and then I, I hung out with slightly different people than Ben. So, like, my friends are more nerdy. Derek. Yeah, and I had I had one friend from eighth grade up through high school. We're still friends now. But he was the main guy I hung out with. And anytime like whenever the other two were out of the house at college or wherever i would just be like hey mom dad i'm going over to derek's house and we play modern warfare 2 <laughs> and that was it <laughs> that was my high school experience but as far as what i wish that we would have been taught or learned i guess um i guess some more like outdoorsy skills and stuff because like we never went like camping no. or anything because mom and sis were against it and dad didn't want anything to do <laughs> 22 years man no fucking way a couple no. times a year you can wake me up early when we go hunting but i'm not mm-hmm. sleeping on the ground i don't know or we could have done like more like kayaking or something as a family but like as a family of five it's it's expensive to do well you know i guess we didn't always have the money for that but but we it, taught you to shoot yeah, we, we did learn how to shoot, which was fun. Learned how to do knives. Learned how to take knives from people. Take guns from people. Take guns from people, like I taught you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so like we had a dojo set up at the house, though. <laughs> and then Ben and Sis left, and I was just sitting there like, oh, I don't have anybody to spar with. Do. Spar or practice this with, but uh, overall, I think it was pretty good. Pretty good childhood. The surprise attacks in the middle of the night were great. It's just me! I'm going to pee! (laughs) Oh, I remember one time I was... I was... I came in a little bit later than I normally do. So it was like, ooh, look out, like 9, 30, 10. (laughs) And I walk in the door and all I see is dead just in the shadows of his doorway with a little like bb gun and he goes who's there and i was like it's me dad like who the fuck else has a key to the house and you hear you you know you hear it in the lock and you're like who's me and i'm like it's your son it's your, it's your youngest boy papa <laughs> the only one that still lives here and you're like yeah sure pow 
<laughs> you got me right in the fucking thigh with that. <laughs> I was like, ah. that hurt. So, pretty good. Be lucky. I pulled a real gun on Ben in fucking North Carolina. <laughs> That was me. Was, you pulled remember. the gun on me. It was Fliss. <laughs> I got up to pee in the middle of the night. I come out of the bathroom and, who's there? Fuck! It's me! It's me! Who's me? Yeah. I like, damn it, man! To, like, hold my piss until the morning. <laughs> or just, like, move silently as death itself and not wake anybody up. I yeah. figured out real fast how to open doors mad slow. <laughs> <laughs> and so they didn't make a sound and tiptoe my way to the bathroom. Chloroform yeah. the, the dog. dog. <laughs> and, 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 and like the only time they would know I was out of bed is when the toilet flushed. So, you know, when the toilet flushes, you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, there's not an intruder. The intruder's not shitting in my john. <laughs> <laughs> While he's robbing my house. And after that, you can kind of walk freely back to the bedroom. Whistling Dixie and go to sleep. And then worry about no guns getting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, every. So what I'm hearing from all of that is you've got stories. Yes. We got, <laughs> we got some good stories out of it. Some good times. Some fun times. We're glad we peed before the gun came up. <laughs> I was never scared of what was in the dark because we knew what it was and it was dead. <laughs> everything else in the dark was scared of him. But. Uh, I mean, every everybody is raised differently. You learn things from how you were raised to do things differently. I think that was partly of what Dad and I did. We wanted to raise you guys differently than what we were, but we wanted it to be a a good thing for you. I mean, I told you guys from the time you were two, you're not living in my basement. 18, you graduate high school, you're going to college or a trade school. You're not coming back to live in my basement. And to drive that point home, when Ben left, we downsized a car and a house, and we just kind of kept doing that. Yep. So now it's a 3-1, and you're here for a few days, and... <laughs> get the hell out! A little uncomfortable trying to get five people through one bathroom, but hey! Plumbing <laughs> it, It's It's because we raised you to be adults and to be able to... Make your good choices when you moved out and understand what adulting was. And I think you have to be an advocate for your children. And I think that's the difference between what we did and what most Americans do. Most Americans want to hang on to their kids and, you know, they get all butt hurt when their kid takes off and, oh, Johnny's not coming home. We're like, thank God. Uh, because we raised you to be functioning members of society. That was the deal from the very beginning. Get out there, be a functioning member of society, earn your living, pay your taxes. There was a calendar counting down the days until everybody was out of the house. Well, you know. I mean, it's... We're not helicopter parents. Right. <laughs> we're, we're not going to be of you. We're not going to try to live our life again through you. We had our chance to, to be your age and to, and to do things at your age, which we obviously did totally different than what ages you guys are now. So, you know, we had our chance to do that. We're still young. We have no children at home. Our responsibility is us and the dog. And, you know, yeah. (laughs) So, you know, we, we've done that. So we kind of are doing it in reverse. And that's why we're telling you, you know, go after that career, go after what it is you want to do with your life when you're young and in your 20s and early 30s. And then, you know, get, you know, find your life partner if that's what you want. Have babies if that's what you want. I mean, you'll have a bit more in money and investments. You'll be more stable. You'll have that for you. I mean, it, there, there's pros and cons to both ways of doing it. And well, and I think that's where we are now with the three of you is we're trying to throw things at you that never got thrown to us by our parents. You know, how to invest, how to save, how to move ahead financially and 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 that kind of stuff, which, you know, most people don't get taught. No, yeah, and that's part of the reason this podcast was started. So, you know, if we ever forget it or want to go back to the topic, you just got to listen to it again. Right. Yeah. And I think 
like even today, like there's stuff we're saying today that probably if we revisited this topic in a year's time, we'd have different stuff to say. But uh, don't get us wrong. We do cherish and love each one of you um, exactly how you are and where you are in life. And we are your soft soft place to land where you're where you're where you're sounding board we're there to give you that encouragement we're there to give you the pop up the back of the head to say what the fuck were you thinking doing that but it's all in love because we love you guys dearly you're i mean we joke a lot about oh can't wait for you guys to be gone but we do miss you and and we do love you but you know what the greatest joy for us is seeing how your life is unfolding, seeing how you're making choices, what you're doing. I mean, it's so exciting to see what Felicity is doing in her life. She just up and moved out West and absolutely loves where she is. She's taking care of business, living her best life, has a plan in place. You boys have your, (laughs) you boys have your plans in place. You've taken different paths It's amazing and wonderful to see how you're growing, how your relationships with each other is changing, how your understanding of each other's personalities and quirks are coming into play and how you support each other. And that's for us is probably for me, I know it's like the greatest joy to see that knowing, okay, I didn't totally screw these guys up. They don't have to be reprogrammed. I know we fucked them totally. Um. (laughs) Totally screwed my. I think. And on that note, <laughs> I, I think the la, for my last viewpoint, I guess is um, I, for me personally, this is kind of a sad time. I just buried my dad the day before Christmas, um, and shit sucks. You know, uh, life happens, but um, there's no way I would have had the opportunity to talk to my dad like you guys talk to me or you know you get you know been in this last year you called a lot asked a lot of advice um you know trying to navigate your way through your your life and your where you find yourself in your life right now and um even just offering even me on our family group me that we have to keep up with one another, posting videos, which I know you guys find annoying, but still Only shit. sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, on finances and all sorts of stuff, just throwing information at you left and right. Uh, m- my dad and I never had that. Um, there's there's no way I could have called dad and and, and got that information from him. So... Uh, you know, as mum was saying, we wanted to have a different relationship with you than our parents had with us. And I'm sure that should you guys decide to have kids, you'll want a different relationship with your kids than we had with you. It's the, you know, it's trying to steer, I guess, and give information so that you guys can succeed. That's what we want. That's our whole focus has been on helping you succeed. Final thoughts from you guys? Nobody can no, see you. Wow, crickets. Not too much. Yeah, crickets on that one. But that's a good note to end on, I think. Yep. Um, so everybody out there, enjoy your new year. Hopefully 2021 is better than... The dumpster fire. ...than this year. And we'll all get through it. But look forward to seeing this podcast again sometime in the future. Not sure when we'll come back for season two of this. I'm workshopping a couple other podcasts to so keep that... Keep your ears open for that. And uh, Ben's also got his podcast that he's doing, What in the World, with his buddy Alex, and which Dad and I might be on a newer episode. So <laughs> a little bit of sizzle for you. <laughs> but so until next year, uh, I've been Josh. I'm Mom. I'm Dad the Greatest. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm Felicity. I'm Ben. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.